Okay, one question that was asked in live streams a couple of times is, how do you avoid hand hits with a sword that doesn't have extensive hand protection? First off, it depends on what kind of hand protection. Uh, like this Hungarian saber here, which is quite nice, uh, has a knuckle guard. So that protects the hand, of course, to an extent. Um, however, if you hold this forward, it's not perfect, obviously. Like, you can catch this deliberately on the knuckle guard. So this is mainly going to be what you want to do with a knuckle guard. More active defense, keeping, keeping it aligned with it. I can just turn the knuckle guard into it, essentially. From either side, if you want to cut from the other side, I just turn it over and that's, that's all right. But at the same time, I can still be hit, of course. Like if he faints on this side, for example, and then cuts me on the other side, not only can he target the hand, but also the forearm. If I adjust the angle, I can cut over top here. I can cut to the inside. There's still plenty of ways to attack the hand. So the only way in which your hand is completely safe is in a basket hilt. And this also applies to two-handed swords. So assume for a moment he didn't have mitten gauntlets. Let's say I pretend to cut here, he goes to defend against that, and then I dip under and cut the hand, things like this, for example. Or simply assuming I'm just a little bit quicker because I managed to not telegraph at all and just, just do this. So there are a few things you can do. It's always a good habit when you practice form to tighten everything up as much as possible and then stick to that in sparring as well. So be aware of, for example, your elbow wandering. Like you don't want a chicken wing like this because that's an extra target. You can do it deliberately. Like if, if I'm like, come here, come here, boom, right? Um, but generally keep everything retracted. The less sticks out, the less can be hit, of course. So. That's one thing. Uh, the other, this is the reason why uh, when you're using a sword with one hand, typically the other hand is either on the back like this or on the hip, or it can also be on the chest if you want it to be available for grappling. You need to do this very deliberately because in sparring, as things happen chaotically, the hand may just inadvertently wander and just come forward at a time when you don't want to, and then you get a, get a hit there. For example, if I want to do a hanging parry uh, like this, if I push the arm out like this, on the one hand it's good because I keep the blade further away from myself, on the other hand, other hand, haha, the, the arm of course is much more exposed, so he can easily target that if he wants. Now if, on the other hand, if I... I keep saying on the other hand because I'm talking about hands. Help me. Hey, Scout, need a hand? <laughs> if I retract it, not so exposed anymore. I'm long point and he wants to target my hand in some way. If I pull it in like this, I'm safe. So hand exposed, he goes for it. Just pull it in and then you can counter thrust or whatever you want. If you do that, you might expose your body a little bit more. There's pros and cons to everything, obviously. Very important is during a cut to not lead with the hand. So if you do this kind of number, you're in trouble, right? So in this case, you're leading with the hands rather than with the sword. A way to avoid that is by pulling the pommel in and pushing out with the main hand. So what that does is it makes the point lead. So imagine you have a string tied to the point here that connects over there and somebody pulls it forward. So this, this is much less exposed. So I'm just gonna be in this position here so you can see it better. So one way to cut, you see how exposed that is. And another way, much less exposed. So that's very important e with either two hands or one hand. With a single hand, that's the same thing. You know, you don't want to do this because that's terribly exposed, but rather this. There's one case where the hands being exposed is just part of the game, which is armored fighting. So imagine both of us are wearing a full suit of plate armor. How would we uh, try to threaten each other. One big way is to use half-sorting, like grab the blade here and guide 
the blade into gaps of the armor. This is also the reason for this, because if I wanted to do it with a regular thrust, it's quite a bit harder for me to hit this, because now I, I have less accuracy. Here, I can steer it much tighter and can jam it right in there and find the gaps. Let's say he's attacked. I catch it here, move the blade off to the side, and now I can thrust right in here. You can also jam it in here, which is also kind of rude. There are a lot of ways to exploit gaps in the armor. What can you do to avoid that? Well, get good basically, because this is just, this is just how you fight an armor. This is what both want to do. <laughs> so basically it's like asking, how do you not get hit? Get better. Also good to be aware of is one tactic uh, from, from a bind, the opponent dips under and cuts to the hands. This is very fast. So all I'm doing is simply disengage and cut. This may not look like much, but keep in mind that you wouldn't just do this, you would do this, essentially. You would bring your entire body weight into this cut, and of course, against an arm or fingers, this would be devastating. So, simply what you have to do here is simply be aware of it to a large extent. So if he tries that, dips under, all I gotta do is just move it down, and the nice thing is now I have an overbind, which means from here, I can thrust and it's a covered thrust. I keep control of his, his blade. So again, he tries to go for it, boom. And I'm like, no, you don't stab him in the thigh or just cut from here. Also an option. So you simply need to know in which ways your hands are exposed. Try to keep them out of danger by keeping the movement tight and yeah practice a lot, essentially. Hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching. And thank you for helping. Anytime. For that, you get oh. the ultimate reward, a quick death.